Welcome back to a very special extended version of Colonel at the Buzzer this week. We want to retract our statement from two weeks ago where we said Cal was staying. A lot has changed in the past 48 hours, and he is in fact leaving for the Arkansas Razorbacks. This week I'll be joined by sports editor Cole Park and assistant sports editor Ali Chetanak. We'll talk about Cal leaving, the implications of it, and who's coming next. All that and more next. Welcome back to a very special episode of Colonel at the Buzzer. This week, I'm joined by two familiar faces. Introduce yourself, gentlemen. I am Cole Park, and I'm the sports editor of the Kentucky Colonel. I am Ali Chesnut, and I am one of the assistant sports editors of the Kentucky Colonel. So, (laughs) Sunday afternoon, I was brainstorming, and I was thinking, what can we do a podcast about this week? So there's not much we can maybe talk about the guys that are leaving, you know, going to the NBA, going to the portal. I was like, but it's going to be a short episode. Then about three hours later, mm. you know, something may or may not have happened. A little something. A little something. After 15 <laughs> seasons, or 410 wins, 123 losses, a championship in 2012, four final four appearances, the three-time Naismith Coach of the Year four-time SEC Coach of the Year, John Calipari, is gone. He is gone. As of this morning, he officially resigned from Kentucky. <sighs> Good Lord. The craziest news in college sports. It overshadowed the national title game. I was just trying to watch a movie. I was watching the Godzilla movie with I was my watching family. WrestleMania, man. <laughs> I was yeah. sitting there watching. And that was a huge deal, too. It was a huge deal. Everyone that ever wrestled in that WrestleMania. You forget that the women's even had a national championship earlier in the day. It's easy to forget the men even had a national championship oh, that yeah. weekend. It's crazy. I mean, I don't really know if there's any other way to go about it. I mean, it's kind of the timing of it all has kind of worked out because there's less question marks we have to address. We can just talk about the implications of those answers. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Cole, I know you've been – Losing sleep up for this crap. Let us in on it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're talking about a massive story here. Like, that can't be overshadowed. I mean, the win- South Carolina women's basketball completed a perfect undefeated season, became yeah. only the sixth ever team to do so in the history of the sport. Um, UConn won back to back national titles, the first time a team's ever done that in over a decade. Um, the last time was Billy Donovan at Florida. It's you know, almost wink, wink. two decades ago, right? <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, a while ago. Um, you know, WrestleMania happened, one of the biggest sporting events of the world. Uh, even if you want to say WWE is a little bit silly, you know, a lot of big things happened, but the biggest story was John Calipari. And I was sitting there at my desk Sunday night. I'm doing my thing. And, you know, there had been rumblings. Like, we're not going to pretend like that it just came out of completely nowhere. I'd heard a little bit earlier in the week, like, oh, ha ha, John Calipari to Arkansas. And everyone's like, yeah, whatever, shut up. Yeah. And <laughs> I believe actually I said, um, one of our reporters, uh, Landon Rogers Keaton, he sent that to our, our Slack chat, and I was like, "It's just not happening. Like, what are we talking about right now?" Um, Sunday night, you know, I, I'm pretty close to a lot of people on the UK beat, a lot of people in UK media, and I get a text. You know, I'm in a group chat, and I get a text, and I'm like, "Hey, um, I don't want to stress anyone out, but there might be something here. You know, something might be going down." So I'm, I'm like, uh, "I don't know. You know, I don't really know, but here's the deal. You know." You've been in this job long enough, especially at this level, when something might be happening, you write about it. Yeah. Maybe the worst case scenario, that story gets scrapped, but when something like that happens, you know, it's a, I, apparently a lot more people don't know this expression than I thought, but I've always said this. I grew up hearing this. You know, you don't want to get caught with your pants down, for lack of a better term. You yeah. know, you don't want John, Car- Pal- John Calipari to leave and you don't have a story about it. So yeah. um, I wrote that story, you know, just getting ready. Like, you know, I don't think anything's happening. I think this is a bunch of, you know, a bunch of tomfoolery, a bunch of a little clowning around. And, you know, John Calipari is going to be our coach next year, right? We all watch the Mitch Barnhart Calipari sit down i mean biggest waste of time how do you you don't get an athletic director to agree to let you come back after losing to st peter's in oakland and then yeah. leave right like that's not what happens it's but wrong. um started picking up i started picking up and by that night you know as i wrote the story and i was like you know maybe we won't know anything till like monday or tuesday but that night we got the confirmation from pete the, um espn it was a uh, borzello and um and the likes said so cal perry is working on a five-year deal with arkansas and i was <laughs> Stunned, stunned so fast, you know. So immediately, uh, I got I dialed up Tyler and I'm like, dude, 
here's a list of coaches. You know, add one or two if you want to. He did add Will Wade, by the way, since you hate that so much. Um, <laughs> Awful take. Awful. Uh, I love you, I, Tyler. I, Awful take. I gave him a list of um, coaches, and, you know, he agreed with most of them. And I was like, give me a coaching candidate story. You know, if it's due by noon tomorrow, that's fine. But he's he's like, no, I understand. I'll get it done tonight. I was yeah. like, perfect. Um, Sam, I got her. I She, she kind of texted me. She's in the same group. And she's like, what is going on? And I was like, look, just – Give me a reflection piece. Reflect on the years of Cal Perry. We got to do a remembering Cal piece. You know, I don't know when it's going to happen, but we got to prepare for it. I sat down that night and I wrote a couple stories here that have all seen the light of day now. Um, I wrote a column thinking it's a good, a good decision personally. And I also wrote a uh, how did we get here kind of story. That one's a lot of fun. Uh, it's titled Domino Effect How Chicken Nuggets, Texas, and Oklahoma Led to a Seismic Shift in College Basketball. Good old Tyson. We'll get there. Um, but yeah, so it was kind of like what's going on, and we put it out there, and then comes Saturday, the day that a complete solar eclipse is coming to the country. It's a story that's been not sports news, world news, yeah. <laughs> that a total eclipse is hitting the earth, and it's going to be visible for us. This is national news. Arkansas declared a state of emergency. The state did, um, which is- A little overkill. A little overkill, a little we'll bit wild, but you know, some people, they, it was the rapture, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but immediately that morning, Aaron Bradshaw's in the portal before even noon hit. I think I put that in the story. Like before noon even hit, Bradshaw's in the portal. Yeah. Carter Knox decommits. Um, Joey Hartner's the portal. Oh, no. But um, <laughs> a lot Canceled of sh- the meeting, too. Yeah, They're a lot of stuff. There's supposed to be a team meeting yesterday and all of that. And all we really get tomorrow other than people leaving is that we'll know today. And today happens. And sure enough, it's around 2 p.m. I was in class. Had the story ready to go already, though. John Calipari posts a video, and in that video, which he then deleted because it was blurry and reposted to yeah, get better filmed quality. filmed it on a potato. <laughs> reposted it since it was better looking. Um, he said that he'd had some talks with his wife and with his family, and um, it was time for a change of scenery. You know, they Kentucky needed to hear a new voice, and sure enough, he admitted to stepping down as Kentucky men's basketball head coach. To my knowledge, he is not a like a no public deal with Arkansas is made, but everybody knows yeah. this man's going to Arkansas. Yeah. His picture is in Bud Walton. They got, they got graphics up, you know. They got graphics for him, but I don't think a deal's actually been made yet. Um, but they've got graphics in Bud Walton with that man's face on it. Mitch Barnhart tweets out that, you know, grateful to Cal for his service. We're looking for coaches right now. Put it in stone. And it's been a whirlwind. I mean, Rob Dillingham declared for the draft today on NBA Today, and that's really the only major change yeah. other than that. But um. It's been a lot these last few days. Like you said, I lost sleep. I didn't sleep the night that announcement came out. I <laughs> took an hour-long nap in the car on the way back from Bloomington for the eclipse, but it's been a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'd say there's going to be two kind of moments where you remember where you were yeah. when this happened. I'm going to be f- full honestly here. I was on the toilet when I heard <laughs> news about John Calipari potentially leaving Kentucky. I was like, hold on, this might not – Kind of what you said, there was some steam kind of rolling all weekend, and then you kind of see people who are like, hold on, why is this guy saying this? And then you're like, hold on, there might be some truth to this, and then the ball just kept rolling, and the Arkansas news Arkansas media out. knew before Kentucky media did. Oh, yeah, and it's just been the craziest 48 hours in Kentucky basketball history. But you can yeah. even argue college basketball history. It's, it was a lot like the Stoop situation immediately this year, which Stoops ended up staying, but it's like – the timing from which the text came through, like, hey, something might be happening to, yeah. like, publish story, he's gone, was only a few hours. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was, it was, hey, by the way, there's something, there might be some smoke to this. And then within 10 minutes, it was like, let me talk to some people. I talked to some people in Arkansas. I talked to some other people in the UK media. I talked to, you know, some people I know, some sources. And, you know, other people I know also talked to their sources. You know, there's a lot of asking around. And within an hour, it was this might be happening and then within two hours it was this is probably happening and within three hours it was this is happening (laughs) it was so fast so quick and you know i would have expected this two weeks ago when we see that kind of the timing it's a waste of time now but that kind of sham of it tv interview that they had with mitch and cal which looking back on is after everything that's happened the last two days, is one of the strangest events in Kentucky yeah, basketball. I mean, I'll we, never understand. We said after the Oakland game, you know, you had national media. I'm a big fan of Matt Norlander at CBS. He said, has Coach Calipari coached his last game at Kentucky? This had steam. As soon as they lost to Oakland, it was, he's out. I wrote a column saying he should be out. Yeah. You know, it was all of this, you know, 
you think if there was going to be a move, it would happen around then. Yeah. It didn't. In fact, the opposite happened. Mitch Barnhart said Coach Calipari will be back here next season. And I fully believe he intended believe he for that, that to happen. I believe he thought Mitch, that. Yeah. And it just makes this all so much crazier is that Mitch really stuck his head out there. He did. Put his head out on the line for Calipari say, we're probably going to get into the more nitty gritty, but we know that conversation with Cal looked like Mitch basically saying, I have this $33 million that people around here gave me to basically get rid of you. Mm -hmm. Then Cal, you know, he's an egotistical man. Let's just call it how he is. He's probably... <laughs> Yeah. Better or worse, a narcissist, which, yeah. I mean, if you're a Hall of Fame college basketball coach, I you would probably be too, have to you know? be. But, I mean, we're talking about, well, he like— He felt unwanted here, and then, you know, we're going to talk about maybe what's true, what we've heard, <laughs> blah, 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 maybe why he did what he did. But it's yeah. just so strange that the Tyson chicken people at Arkansas— <laughs> Who now you have know? John Calipari. Well, I, we're, we're talking about, like, Mitch Barnhart here. Like, this was such a baffling decision to him, like, to stick his neck out for Cal. Like, we're not just talking about, like, no. oh, he's not going to pay the 30 Like, it's, it's not, it's oh, he did him a favor by not paying him $33 million. Online. People were saying on social media that Mitch Barnhart's a coward. Mitch Barnhart needs to be fired. Mitch Barnhart got more hate in the last few yeah. days after BBN said, after he said he's not bringing, after he said he is bringing back Calipari, than some people were giving Calipari. People wanted Mitch gone. They said he should be fired. They said he's a coward. He can't do it anymore. Like, yeah. This man put his job, his reputation yeah. out there. People were fed up with Mitch because yeah. he decided to stick with Cal. And then Cal left. And I'll say this about Mitch. And obviously, we're not going to know what truly happened this no. last 48 hours. No. Until maybe years from now. Until one of them writes a book. But <laughs> if what we're, book. what we're hearing is true right now, Mitch Barnhart has to be... A lot more respect has to be put on his name yeah. about coming about. See, my thing is with um with some of the reports that have been coming. You know, you have to you know take them with a grain of salt a lot of the times, like you know to the validity. But one report kind of struck me. It was one that said, "This has been a a seed that's been planted in the world of Kentucky basketball and especially in Calipari since back in February." Mm -hmm. So my thing reportedly is reportedly he was interested in the Ohio State job. So my thing is, how do you? No, like, how do you sit down with your athletic director, say that this is, like, you know, where you want to be, you talk about chasing championships, you want to be here, you want to succeed. So in y'all's mind, do you think that he genuinely, he was in that interview hearing everything that Mitch is saying, and it's like, he knows he's not going to be here? I, I think yes. the plan was, really, I, I think, think so. the plan was back two weeks ago that they were going to try to stick it out for another year, That's which... We yeah. know would have probably been the exact same thing this year that we yeah, saw this past year. Delaying the inevitable more so. Again, we're going to probably not know what truly happened, but I think we can kind of talk about it. There's been some weird reports out there. There have that, been weird reports. You know, Cal might have pump faked this one, and it might not have worked in his favor. I truly believe which makes it so weird on why that happened to begin with. Because why would you do that anyways? Yeah. What's the point of doing that if you don't believe that is what's going to be the future? If you don't, yeah. Yeah. you're on live TV. Lexington Media isn't the nicest people in the world to begin with anyway. They're why nicer would, than some other media we've covered. They, they are. But why <laughs> are you going on live TV with the AD of your university if you don't believe that's where your future remains? Just, if you and if you if you like the guy, if you have respect, if you have respect for the guy, which means he's worked for him. His entire 15 career here. 15 I mean, yeah. career. There, were, there was a bit of a fracture between the not AD a, and Not Calipari. a bit. There a, was a, a big huge fracture, huge fracture between, fracture, but like, between the AD and I don't know if it John could ever – nothing to the point where, like, you can – essentially, if you have that in, in your mind that you might not want to be here, even, honestly, even if it's just a thought, I don't think you can do something like that. You make you put Mitch out there and you make him look like a fool. Well, what's interesting to me is we just talked about how there's a massive fracture, but Mitch still stuck his neck out. Yes. For him. All that knowing that the two don't really like each other. Yes. It's he crazy. still stuck his neck out there. I mean, do I think that in that moment the interview was happening, Calipari knew he wasn't going to be here? I don't know. Okay. I mean, there's been a lot of reports out there. You know, stuff that I don't even want to give the light of day to because it's so out there. We yeah. don't know that it happened, but you know, you believe the whole pump fake aspect i don't know i don't know that i believe that um it's not we haven't had anything. all though we haven't had anything confirmed in that regard yeah. but yeah absolutely um it's just it's such a i mean i knew that calipari had respect for the arkansas job he said so before he even got to kentucky this has not been a new thing for him he's had respect for the arkansas job he's been close to the tyson family you know and arkansas 
can say what you want to. That, that's a program that's won a national title. Yeah. That's a that's not a joke program. That's a no. big program, and they've got a lot of money. Okay, are they Kentucky? No, but it's a good program. And simply put, Calipari needed out of Kentucky because we can talk about it all we want to. Everyone can say they wanted Calipari to win another title, and I'm sure a lot of people wanted that. But Calipari was never going to win another title here because that relationship was broken beyond repair. No. For some people, it was broken before Oakland. But for everyone, it was broken at Oakland. People yeah. lost faith in Cal Perry. He might have had the best team in the world next year that could have gone on with the Natty, but every single loss was going to be thrown in his face. Every single shortcoming was going to be the end of the world. And quite frankly, if he had the money for the buyout this year, if they got upset next year or something happened and they didn't exceed expectations, maybe they didn't even go to the Final Four next year. Cal Perry was gone. Yeah. Okay? There was no... like We talk about leashes in college sports. He had none. He, he was like duct tape to a fence that's how small his leash was and he wanted out he wanted somewhere he could be more comfortable yeah and arkansas is a good job and so do you think if um so we you know you talk about this domino effect <laughs> you know smu firing rob Lanier. i think it goes a bit before that but yes. well yes 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 but like you know from fairly superficial stuff rob Lanier fired from smu mm-hmm. andy enfield goes to smu mm-hmm. a usc job comes open musselman goes to USC after that comes open. Mm-hmm. But more so, you know, you can talk about the domino effect, but if that doesn't happen, if Arkansas is not available, do y'all think that he just sticks it out here? I do. Um, I think yeah. that Calipari wanted out, but it was also going to depend on the job. I think that he wanted Ohio State, like we heard, but Ohio State won. You know, that's a program that yeah. if people thought Michigan was a school that cares more about football than basketball, Ohio <laughs> State could would sacrifice their entire basketball program for another national title in football. Yes. Um but it's still a solid job. You know, Columbus is a big school. They got money. But they, you know, they found success. After Holtman was fired, they had Diebler come in there, and he turned it around. They're like, well, let's just keep our guy. Yeah. You know, the players like him. He's done well. Let's keep our guy. Yeah. And some people thought that was a wild move, but it worked out for the school, and I'm, if they're happy with it, what do I care, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think it was definitely job dependent. If Arkansas didn't come open, you know, Calipari wasn't just going to go anywhere. He wanted a change of scenery, but it had to be the right change of scenery. Um, now, do I think he would have kind of gone through the motions next year and pretty checked out? Probably. Mm-hmm. But he would have done that instead of going to somewhere that was lesser, that would have offered him less or would have not set him up for success. Because the last thing Cal Perry wants, like we just said, he's a guy with an ego. He's not going to take a, that big of a downgrade. Yeah. You know? yeah. I just yeah. think it was perfect timing at the weirdest timing. I agree. It's I basically agree. It was timing. what it comes down to. And. You can't ignore the tip. I mean, like you said, Arkansas had it's the second best job in the SEC after Kentucky. If you really want to talk to it historical wise, they yeah. Yeah, won agree. a national championship. I mean, we can talk about what Alabama's been, but Alabama made its first ever Final Four yeah. this year. Yeah. This is a program that oh, has yeah. a national title. We Arkansas is a bigger too. job. Yeah, yeah. So I think I mean he coached at Memphis. He's been around the area for a long time. I think. He just simply needed to change the scenery, which is not something that UK fans, I think, should dislike no. John Calipari no. for. I mean, let's be fair. If there's going to be reasons why he disliked John Calipari, there's going to be a lot more than just that. Yeah. So I do think it was just perfect timing at the weirdest timing. Yeah. I think general consensus with this whole situation across, I mean, I don't know if I've seen an opinion that's skewed away from the fact that it's beneficial for both parties. Oh, I yeah. Agree. My column said just that. This is good for everyone. Yeah. And I'd actually like to read a bit of an excerpt from that column if I could that I find pretty No, you can't. I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Every, like, uh, when something like this happens, there's a lot of worry. There's a lot of fear. And a lot of Kentucky fans are, I'll be honest with you, I am 20 years old. John Calipari got to Kentucky when I was six years old, okay? I have some memories from before John Calipari, but I don't remember Billy Gillespie like that. I don't remember Tubby Smith like that. John Calipari, for all intents and purposes, has been my Kentucky basketball life. And he has been that for a lot of people. We're talking about 15 years. So even people that are older than 15, you know, they weren't watching basketball as closely. They weren't paying his attention. I mean, people grew up with John Calipari being their coach. And these last few years have been awful, but I don't think people can understate just how good that 2009 to 2019, that was one of the best decades in college basketball ever, yes. apart from maybe UCLA winning titles every he, year. He <laughs> made Lexington, Kentucky the coolest place in the world for 10 years. Without a doubt. And no matter how bad the last four years are, and we're probably going to get into it deeper, on, you have to appreciate that first decade 
of excellence from John Cal. He was the face of college basketball for ten years. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And but my point that is that you know I understand it's scary, and I get that it can be a lot. But here's whatever I said. Now it's easy to understand that being in the search for a new head coach for the first time in over a decade, staring down the barrel of an off season in which, for all intents and purposes, your entire team might skip town, is yeah. scary. But simply put, if you didn't have faith in him to do the job here. Why does this change that? If he can't do it in Lexington, Kentucky, why can't he suddenly now do it in Fayetteville, Arkansas? I mean, sure, he'll have one of the biggest NIL collectives in college basketball and have access to the best recruits, but he already had that here. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. say Kentucky was a little bit behind in NIL, but they were going to give him money, and they already had the best recruits. So who cares? If he couldn't do it here, I don't suddenly think he can do it there. Do I think Cal's going to succeed there? Probably. Yeah. He's Calipari. It's John Calipari. But, People that did a full 180 are kind of surprising to me. You know, I understand the the fear, the shock and all that, but if Calipari needed to be fired after losing to Oakland, why has that changed now? He it's, hasn't got a yeah. single recruit commitment since then. We haven't gotten anybody in the transfer portal since then. Yeah. Nothing at all has changed except people have declared for the draft and enter transfer portal. Yeah, I think it's kind of a thing. It's like, you know, everybody wanted Cal gone you know, it, it's been a thing that's lingering. It's been it's lingered for years and like the past, you know, three, four years. It came to fruition now and I feel like with a lot of people, now that it happened, they're kinda like like, oh crap. Like what do we do now? But, you know, I kinda wanna shift. You know, you can talk about Cal leaving, but then there's the other storyline of oh crap, there's an opening for the position of head coach <laughs> at the University of Kentucky and this doesn't happen. Often, no, not often at all, and it's a huge deal. I mean, like you know, like Ali, like how was, I said to you one time in class when Nick Saban resigned, I think this is an even bigger scale deal it than that. Definitely is big. This is the biggest story in sports right now. Oh, absolutely. There's no, there's no bigger job in college sports than head coach at the University of Kentucky. There just isn't. Yeah, and now that job is open. And we're going to talk about who we think candidates are, blah, blah, blah. We could talk about the future of the program. We could talk about players coming in. But the best job in the country is open right now. Simple yeah. as that. And if we could talk about a player standpoint, there's some fans talking about, oh, the roster is going to be depleted. Everyone's gone. If I'm a top, let's say, transfer portal guy right now, why, you're not? Looking at, why not Kentucky? Why not? That's the Biggest stage in the country, and now they need players, and they need players fast. So kind of talk about what Cole just brought up about the future might look bleak for some. I'm on the opposite side. This ha this is an exciting time for Kentucky because yes. just as you said, we don't go through this often. Yeah. How old we? Were, I was, what, seven years old the last time this happened. Old. So, like, this to me is like uncharted waters. There has to be a sense of excitement in the air. I mean, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely am. No, it's it's – it's exciting, you know, but with excitement comes, you know, you know, fear and unsurety. Sure. But I feel like there's a bit of a buffer with that because it's Kentucky, obviously. It's yes. not like, you know, with other schools, you know, we might they might make the wrong hire, they might get a guy that's not qualified. There's yeah. no worry with Kentucky that they're going to get an underqualified coach. Yeah, I'll say I mean, the thing about Kentucky is they're the only school to win with five head coaches before. Yes. They I mean, you can talk about Billy G all you want, but they don't make bad hires. They really very seldom, don't. very seldom. But, you know, we can talk about the candidates that we had, you know, in two hours ago with all the news that's happened. You want to say what time we're recording just, just so people know yeah. in case some news this comes is, out uh, literally right when we 8 13, stop recording? 8.13 p.m. on Tuesday, April 9th, just in case, you know, we have some news. You know, we talked about Danny Hurley with – the preposterous amount of money that he was offered for five to seven years. And, you know, obviously, you know, we're not talking about him that much, so you can draw your own conclusion on that. We talk about Billy Gillespie. He's in midseason with the NBA with the Billy Chicago. Billy Donovan. Billy, golly, Billy Donovan. I've said that four I do times. I want to say, though, Billy Gillespie. Four times today I've done that. One of the worst coaches Kentucky's ever had, and he still had 27 more wins than losses. So it's wild. Yeah, you, there's a, definitely an argument to be made that <laughs> it's relative, he right? Didn't it's all really, relative. Yeah, it is. It's all relative. It, terrible by Kentucky standards, but like, we're talking about like Kentucky making the wrong hire. This is not a. I mean, he made a I, tournament. I'm going to knock on what this isn't a Louisville situation. Oh no! <laughs> someone someone actually texted me today and asked me. They said, "What are the chances Kentucky just like falls this?" I was like, zero. That's not happening." Dude, here. If if they hire Kenny Payne now that you said that crap, 
<laughs> he won those games, Colton. Kenny Payne won those games. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, as recently developed, the head heavy favorite as of now for this job Scott is Drew. one Scott Drew. Yes, Baylor's head coach. This guy at Baylor, 446 wins, 244 losses. 2021 National Championship, they decimated Gonzaga. It was embarrassing. Undefeated Gonzaga, by Like, the way. it made them look like a high school team. Yes. It was undefeated Gonzaga got ran off the court. It was just, it was, you know, obviously we're not Baylor talking about imp- Baylor imposed its will in that game. Yeah, it was a very, you know, someone showed up, someone didn't. Three-time Big 12 Coach of the Year. Mm-hmm. We know this guy can coach. He's been doing it for a while. What does this dude bring to Lexington? If it happens, this is nothing official yet, if it happens. I mean, I think what, to an extent you got to say consistency, right? Yeah. I mean, Baylor, we can look at them getting upset by Clemson this year. They were a three seed again. I mean, I had been in my final four. That's how much face I had in them. And you look at Baylor winning the national title, even Baylor the year after winning the national title as a one seed going into the tournament with injuries. You know, that's when they got upset by, uh, I think, North Carolina before they made that run. Um, this was a down year for Baylor, and they were a three seed that I thought could get to the final four. Yeah. They didn't. They played a tough Clemson team. Yeah, a Clemson team that exceeded expectations big time yeah. and got hot at the right time and saved their coach's job. But Very true. Um, we're talking about a guy who, you know, his worst years are still – he lost to a good Clemson team, yeah. but it was still got an NCAA tournament win. You know who had? You know who didn't get an NCAA tournament win this year? John Calipari. He did not do that, no. You know who's won a national title more recently? Scott Drew. Scott Drew. You know who's yeah. shown they can do it in the era of – NIL in the era of immediate transfers, Scott Drew. Yeah, I mean it's like we said before. Um, before all this just started developing with candidates, you know, when they could finally start their search, you know. But uh, it's, you know, obviously the the ideal guy if you could pick anyone's Hurley. You know, without you, a doubt, you, it's you want be. the back to back national championship coach, and arguably, in my opinion, the best coach in the sport. Right he's now. ridiculous, and but it's. I feel like it's mildly unfair to Scott Drew. You know, we talk like you said, Ali. He's not a bad coach by any stretch of the imagination. No. He is just what, when it comes to like the upper echelon of coaches that Kentucky is very capable of getting, just might not be the best guy. Well, here's the thing. He's, I want to say, boring. The safest pick. He is a safe of the pick. very safe pick. And However, if you're at, if you're telling me that in five years he's won a national title, I, I would not be surprised. I and le- you. well, I mean, let's just dive into that a little more. Right now, at Baylor, Baylor is the third recruiting class next year. I also want to point out. After Kentucky. And they have VJ Edgecombe, who's the number one player in the country next year. If he leaves Baylor, where is where is that class going and They're Edgecombe going? They're going to Kentucky. Very true. And he has built roster after roster. He has proven himself that in this day and age, he knows how to build rosters. Yeah. No matter how much Cal wanted to say it last year, that are actually built for March and older <laughs> rosters too. And I, I want I want to add this next too. Next year's team is going to be like twenty three year old average. I'm when you talk you about right things, Scott, true, when baby. you think about things, Scott Drew has built. Put in put a big line and say the Baylor Bears. It's period. Baylor. He yeah. built Baylor. It's not like he yeah. he's built successful teams. He's won a title. Scott yeah. Drew they built, built in that a, a new arena because of what he's done there. He yeah, has literally true. a house that Scott Drew built. In Baylor, yeah. they're gonna have the name, his name on the court. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like you know that misconception that you just uh, uh, before we get on here, Ali. It's like a lot of people think that Calipari is the <laughs> the heart and which I know he he's been the face for the past fifteen years. He obviously. made Lexington very fun, but he didn't but, build Kentucky. But Kentucky was a, be- a prominent basketball school well before he got it was there. The best basketball school. It's already, it has been for did, the past seventy six years. I mean, in Baylor, you know, obviously when you that's the opposite narrative. Scott Drew is Baylor basketball. Built brick by brick. Do I think? Do I think that they're going to be brick. fine once he's gone? Probably. They'll they're a big enough job now, yeah. now, that they'll because hire a good him. coach and they'll stay good. But if Scott Drew had never gone to Baylor, we're talking about Vanderbilt right now, <laughs> and that's not even fair because Vanderbilt's had some more, probably more success than Baylor would have had if Scott Drew never went there. I mean, we're talking about a uh, who's the equivalent? I guess we'd say like they're not. That good if no. Baylor, Scott Drew doesn't go there. Just, just no history. Team. About if Baylor, don't, if Scott, yeah, if go Scott Drew didn't go to Baylor, we're t- we're looking at them the same way we look at like who's another team that just doesn't have history that's a power five. I school. mean, just say Indiana football. 
Yeah, Indiana I mean. football could be <laughs> Baylor basketball. I mean, that's before, not before, before recently. Far. Before yeah. re, okay, here's this here. Before recently, before these last years when they actually did make the tournament, we're looking at Baylor like we look at Northwestern in basketball. Like Probably even nothing. less than that. Northwestern, you can argue, well, have beaten they, some they, teams. They, they, they well, they've yeah, done the this. Is, they they to, got. But the thing is, they went to the tournament this year for like the third time in history. Like, come here's on. the <laughs> thing: when Baylor. No one would go to their games. No. Now they have a new arena. They built an arena that gets packed, this, man. And that's just I mean, we were kind of joking about how spoiled maybe you can call the fan base, but this is like people's last option people's right now, last which is crazy to me. Built a program think, into a national contender. Now, Hurley is the exciting grab. He's yes. the one that is going to be bigger than John Calipari when he came in two thousand nine because he is, like you said, the best coach in the sport. But that no way in shape means that Scott Drew's not a fantastic coach and yeah. can't put more banners up at Rupp Arena. That's not the case. There are fans who look at Scott Drew the same way they look at like Shaka Smart, and those are no, not even no, on the same I'm gonna, level. Yeah, those yeah I was going to say, close. right? I was going to stop that right then and there. <laughs> They're Shaka not even on the Smart same quote, like, and level. Scott Drew shouldn't even be mentioned in the same sentence. This guy won a national championship. If, if, yeah. Kentucky was like getting Shaka Smart. I'd be like, can we just like not play a year and see who's available next year? I, I think I'd boycott the program. Take a to buy, be honest. take a buy year. But no, Scott Drew. I mean, he's not the flashy pick. He's not necessarily the most fun pick. But he, I think Scott Drew could win Kentucky national title. And we yeah. talk about like, I, I think I put this in one of my columns. But like, at the end of the day, like it's it's a little bit spoiled how Kentucky fans and even us right now are talking about it, like winning a national championship is really hard to do very it is very very few coaches have ever done it unless you're Dan Hurley apparently apparently but very few coaches have ever done it so when we're talking about a guy if he can win you a national title then he's a good coach he's a good pick for yep. Kentucky I'd agree I mean just if I'm you, gonna before you go I'm just gonna jump in real quick I think Every candidate on the list right now, which we're hearing is Hurley, Billy Donovan, who we haven't even talked that much about this episode, well, it's him and, or Scott Drew. There, you can throw in some other names in there, too. There's Nate Oates, who I don't fully agree. I, I think his statement he made yesterday was kind of like, eh, you haven't seen $11 million in front of your <laughs> face yet, so let's not say no quite yet. Yeah, But I think any coach they hire out of that bunch – can and will be successful at the University of Kentucky. I just think it's a matter of who right now. No, I mean, the safe, you know, the idea of uh, Scott Drew being a safe pick, yeah, he is. But what's wrong with the safe pick? It's there's in nothing, the name, the nothing, safe pick. There's nothing wrong. There's, I think, with some people, I think there might be a small worry of, like, because, you know, you, you hire a new guy, you want change. Well, and I, it's, just, it's, it's, it's with Kentucky basketball, it's not – I don't know if you want to really say like change, like because you know, like winning is what it happens here. Yeah, winning is what, it, and it's not what's not. I mean, it's just when the wins come here. That's yeah. been the issue in the past couple of years, <laughs> and you want to have them in the right spots, and you want to get hot at the right spots. But with a guy like Scott Drew, I, I just don't know if from a fan base like Kentucky's, if there if there's any worry that they're just going to go back to being the team that you know can get to the Sweet Sixteen. Can maybe get to an elite eight, you know. But like, he, but they'll but be there again, every single year. He's been doing that and better at Baylor. That again needs to be like highlighted that he's had success at Look, Baylor since Kentucky. How won can his you last not national have title. success at Kentucky if you're having success at again since Kentucky Baylor. won its last national title? There have been twelve champions in the sport. Only five coaches have won twelve titles, and Scott Drew is one of them. So, you know, what does that say? He's a coach that uh, – active coaches, and, active coaches. And I, I just want to say this about Scott Drew. Everyone – I think if Scott Drew does end up being the hire, there's going to be people out there that's going to call out Mitch Barnhart just because why didn't you get Dan Hurley? Call him out until Scott Drew wins a title and they're going to be quiet. You <laughs> cannot blame Mitch Barnhart for – we reported – reports have said that they offered up north of $11 million – to Dan Hurley starting you can't get mad at Mitch Barnhart because Dan Hurley you can't drag a guy down from Connecticut if, if a guy doesn't want to come he you doesn't want to come. come and there's going to be I, I was talking to guys earlier about Nate Oates about how there's this kind of feeling that he's comfortable at Alabama he likes kind of being in the background maybe behind the football program there this is the biggest job in the sport 
if you think something is too big or you don't want the challenge or something, then simply put, you're not the man for the job. I don't care who you are. You're not the man for the job. The man for this job, and we, media would feel some type of way every time he said it, but when John Calipari said this job is not built for everyone, it's absolutely, it's not. absolutely not built for everyone, absolutely. and that's the truest thing. You know, there's you could say a lot of things he said might have not been true in his time here. But that's the truest thing he said. This job is not built for everybody, and it's showing right it now. It takes a special kind of coach to be the coach at Kentucky, Golly. the scrutiny, and, the level. And if Scott Drew is saying, I want to be the coach at Kentucky, then all power to him then. Golly. You just dropped the mic on me. <laughs> just lost my train of thought over I'm here. sorry, but I just got hot over there just a little bit. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we can talk about the candidates. We can talk about the future. It's all unsure. But when it comes from a reflection standpoint, I feel like, you know, like we said, it's easy to, like, look at the past four years of this program and how it's gone. And it's easy to, say, like, you know, be happy for change because it's needed. But if you really look back, I mean, because a, a lot of younger fans can really, they don't appreciate and everything that this dude did for this program. Can I start with this one, Cole? Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm graduating in two weeks. On a pers- are you On a personal level, it is kind of annoying that the four years that I came to school yeah. coincided with the four years of the downfall of John Calipari. But yeah. how will fans remember Coach Cal? He made Lexington, Kentucky the coolest place in the world for a decade, though. Yeah. I mean, it's just I can remember in elementary school, you know, the teachers, and I've said this on this podcast before, like the teachers, they all had the cardboard cutouts, the wall stickers of the Marcus Cousins so you could go up and mm-hmm. see how tall you were. Everyone was doing the John Wall dance. The song, you know, it might have been worldwide, might not have been the biggest thing, but everyone here was doing oh, the yeah. song. Everyone here, that's all they talked about was Kentucky basketball for 10 years. That's all it was. And it's all because of that guy. You know how many kids on the basketball court at school after he did the, the shooting the arrow were doing that whenever they made a shot? How many kids still do that to this day, the shooting the arrow when and they had a three shot? I'm, I'm going to say this about right now, there's going to be fans who are going to remember the last four years. But as we go farther down the line in 10 years from now, you're going to remember the good stuff. People remember good yeah. memories. And whether Kentucky fans want to admit it or not, John Calipari gave Big Blue Nation some of the best moments of their lives. Uh, I mean, and they're going to remember those. When it comes to expectations that were had when he was hired here, you know, um, you, maybe you could, say, you could have the argument that, you know, from the titles and the amount that, he, you know, one title. Obviously, yeah. you wanted more, and you know, you know, you the same. You can't hang influence up in the in the rafters on a banner. You can't do that. But when it comes to influence, no one did it like this guy. No. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at a guy who, despite underperforming with a lot of these teams, came to Kentucky, a Naismith Memorial Hall of Famer. He won us a national title in 2012. He got us at number eight, eighth national title, mo- second most in program history. Most Final Fours for Kentucky. Um, he won 400 plus games. Uh, he was Naismith Memorial Coach of the Year 2015. Yeah. He, you know, it, people scoff at it, but that you know, it became a joke that the NBA draft was the most important day for Kentucky basketball. But the amount of talent that has come into Kentucky, the amount of players we have seen, and something that is not being highlighted enough to me, you know, I've got a credential on my credential at home, Flood Relief Telethon. I was right there. Hoops for Haiti. I wasn't no, there for that, but I was there. No one has been a better ambassador Tornado for the relief. state of Kentucky than John Calipari. Calipari was there. I mean, when you look at anything that has happened in this state, and you look at people going out to western Kentucky, I mean, there was a blue-white game in Pikeville. Yeah. What are we doing? And you know, the, the stories are going to be coming out of, you know, there's never been a topic of, is Coach Cal a great guy? We he all is. know he is. We've seen how many families he's changed. When he says he's a player's first coach, he is. He truly cares about his players more yeah. than any other coach out there. It's just these last four years you can't ignore. These That's last the years sad have been thing brutal, it. and it was time for Calipari and Kentucky to separate. I wrote that. I said it's tough. You know, it's kind of like your parents a little bit. Like you don't want them to split, but sometimes it's just what's best. Yeah. And you know, but when you look back at John Calipari, when you have a little bit of time beyond this when you can you know let some of these recency uh, recent emotions i mean john calipari 
was good for Kentucky. Yeah. He won him a national title. He, he was fantastic for the state. He was a brand ambassador. He loved this place, and Kentucky is better because John Calipari yeah. came through it. And Absolutely. let's let's not forget that John Calipari picked this program lost on the side of the road back in 2009. After Billy Gillespie, the, la- it, the latter years of Tubby Smith. This program was I mean. truly lost when Cal came, and he made this place something that can only be described as special <coughs> for yeah. 10 years. I talked about this with my dad. We Kentucky was with Billy Gillespie. Year one, when Kentucky got upset in the Elite Eight, that was a shock. You know how most programs take years to turn around? Year one, Kentucky was back under Calipari. Yeah. That yeah. was, I mean, this, the aura that he was when he first walked through the doors at the Joe Craft Center, I mean, it was the biggest story in college basketball. And it's funny. I mean, the guy upstaged the sun when he left. Let's just talk about that for a second. We forgot that there was an eclipse outside. People were thinking yeah. it was the end of the world. Not going to happen for another for some 10 it was. years. But, I mean, I'm going to remember these last 48 hours, the rest of my life. My last month. I'm going to remember where I was when I learned Coach Cal was leaving. Mm-hmm. I'm going to remember where I was, where that video today dropped. I mean, yeah. surreal. Surreal. I mean, it's like... For me, it's hard to put yourself in the shoes of somebody that's high pro- that high profile and that carries that big of a weight from that big of a program. But because from a fan standpoint, obviously, a fan could care less a fa- about how many guys you send to league. They yeah. care about how many banners you put yeah. up. But if 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 you're a co- co- it's John Calipari for 15 years, and you see all these guys coming through that might not be coming from the best yeah. you know best places in the best situations, and you're Changing their family's life. I mean, if if it, let's say they have he has three, has three guys go to the league this year. Fifty NBA players, fifth thirty five. If if three goes, so as of now, forty seven NBA players, thirty five first round picks, three first overall picks. Mm-hmm. From a coaching standpoint, if you were John Calipari, I'm sure he's fine with that. I'm sure that if you yeah. obviously he wants to win a championship, but if I'm John Calipari, I'm sitting back in my he, recliner. He regrets nothing. No. He regrets nothing. And no. I, I just want to bring Change one lives. more thing about yeah. John Calipari's legacy here at Kentucky. For anyone that's listening, I just want you to go to Google Earth and look at any street on the campus of University of Kentucky and go to whatever year, 2007, 2008. The way that this campus changed – because of, I mean, some will say because of this or that, you can't deny the basketball program runs so much of this campus and the transformation. Yeah. We took, we heard uh, the reason a lot of Boogie Cousins here. and Rondo were arguing about it on their podcast a few weeks ago on the legacy of John Cal Perry and Demarcus Cousins was like, look at what Lexington is now to when we were here and nowadays. You know, people. You know, when you're talking about Mitch, Mitch Barnhart and his legacy too. I mean. How many smaller sports Kentucky have won national titles or competed? I mean, men's soccer didn't win a title, but they were number one overall undefeated. Stunt is going into the national title, like going into the national championships this weekend. Rifle created a dynasty. I mean, we had softball has been really good. Baseball has gone to super regionals. You know who funds all of that is football and basketball. Yeah. I mean, the success of the basketball pro- program yeah. runs you know, a this. Of, a lot school. of people don't care yeah. as much, but you look at every single team at Kentucky that has ever had success, not named football and men's basketball, and they can thank football and men's basketball for being yeah. able to and, be where they're and at. I'm going to be brutally honest. So much of this university student body is out of state students Absolutely. coming from wherever. You cannot tell Chicago. me. That these Chicago kids or whatever did not come down to Kentucky because yeah. they knew they were good at basketball when they grew up. They watched Coach Cal. The reason teams. people come here. Yes, the reason one hundred percent. I mean, very, even if it's not the reason they come here, I'm it's one, one of those of the kids. They know who Kentucky is at all. Yes, yeah. I, I mean, I made the argument that Nick Saban was the most important man in Alabama because what he did for that university in that state. It's the same thing that applies to Coach Cal Perry. Yeah. He, there's so much that. Like I, I'm, I'm sounding like I'm like defending Coach Cal right now. It was the time for both parties to, oh. but that's not a bad thing. No. Does that mean he's not going to get booed next winter when he comes back in red? I don't know. We'll wait and see. BBN isn't very nice to <laughs> coaches, so. No, I mean it's um, it's kind of a it's like the obscure conversations that I remember from my childhood. It's like you always. 
anytime I turn on a basketball game, you know, you see Kentucky and they're always, you know, in the top five. Mm. And from a, you know, from a program standpoint, what Cal did and what, you know, what it was before and what Cal did with it, it's kind of weird, you know, you, when you imagine a school that would be the best in the country, you think of something like UCLA in California, you know, maybe somewhere in Texas, Florida, but no, it's Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> this... I guess, are we Midwest? No, not Midwest. Southeast. Galilee directions. Weird right. southern whatever. Whatever, middle, whatever we want to be, but this Kentucky. little weird shaped thing is run by basketball. And for 15 years, John Calipari did it better than, honestly, you could say anybody in, in history. Maybe, probably not John Wooden. He was pretty good at it. When Calipari came to Kentucky, nobody else could have done what he did. Was no. it time for them to separate? Was it time yes. for them to go elsewhere? Yes, but when John Calipari took over, nobody else could do what John Calipari did. I and guarantee you, if you could go back to 2009 and tell, John, like, show John Calipari that what what happened like with his career and how it would end, and you said, are you, you still want to do this? When so, Billy Gillespie was the coach, if you showed any Kentucky fan what the next 15 years would look like, they would take it. Well, yeah. Even if you should have bite back at you guys a little bit here. I'm going to bite back. There needs to be a distinction between pre-COVID and post-COVID because you can argue there was they were on that trajectory, maybe winning another title. Calipari said this was a ten-year job. He he did. He had ten. He said this is he did. I I just wish for for Cal's sake you could just delete the last four years because yeah but I think if you if you go back to Billy can, Gillespie man. when Billy Gillespie's your head coach if you showed any Kentucky fan look the last four years are going to be abysmal but you're going to have all of this talent you're going to almost go forty and zero you're going to have a national title I think you take it I four really final do. four trips. I think you say yes to that yeah I'm gonna set the record for the most all stars in an NBA game all star game from the one amount school. of money the brand Kentucky I mean I here. I think how I'm going to remember Cal, I think for to have more people with, let me try to phrase this, to have more people think the way I do about Cal, I just wish he had one more here. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. And yeah. he, sh- I mean, we talked about this before. I mean, he. Because that's going to be his about- argument for the next 50 years. Our people are going to look back. He only won so, one. Which is unfair. We it's unfair. About, yeah. But it's how many true. should yeah. he have had? I say four. Four or five. You, wow. I'd go three. I, I'm gonna dial back. I'm gonna say. I'd go three. I'm gonna say really should have. I'll, I'll say three. I'd say, I'd say this one. You can argue that the, you said it earlier. You can argue that the AFC team probably shouldn't have, probably not. for one, been there or win it. <laughs> probably not. So, but I mean, you look at. 2015, I mean, that's a no-brainer. You're 38 no going into yes. the Final Four. You need that to should win be that. a win. Yeah. They should have won the title that year. Right, when and they you lost can talk. To UConn. About, yeah, you can talk about the UConn, not in the title game, but the other loss the, to UConn. Um, the we're talking about uh, John Wall and them. Yeah, 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 I'll give them that. The first year, you can talk about the. I mean, it's recent. It's post COVID, but before the St. Peter's year, they walked into the home court of the eventual national champion and won by twenty plus and, and beat the, the runner up by like thirty. Yeah. So that year should have been a title. Not even talking about like the potential this year had, because when you yeah. look at what this year's team was, they would not have beat UConn. So they I'll, just no. wouldn't have. I'll pose this question to y'all. Um, when you think, if you try to put yourself at the brain of an average Kentucky fan, you talk, you see Cal go down to Arkansas, and you talk about, when you think about how, how you want him to do. Do you want Cal to succeed? As going to an in-conference opponent, do you want Cal to succeed? I, I don't. I want Kentucky and whoever they hire, and Arkansas with John Calipari to be a generational rivalry. Yes, I. That'd be wild. I, I'm. I know we're. Journalists, we're supposed to be whatever. The, I'm going to be ro- rooting for Coach Cal every game that he's in. That's not against Kentucky. And you know what I'll say, I you know hope Pat Kelsey does well too at Louisville. But like yeah. when Kentucky and Louisville face up, here's what I'm saying. Here's my point. I'm not saying I don't want Louisville to succeed. No, yeah. absolutely not. But like when I'm talking <laughs> about, do I want Calipari to succeed? I'm saying when Louisville faced Kentucky in the Final Four of 2012. What I remember that fondly if Kentucky lost. No, but Kentucky won, and looking back on that, that is one of the greatest college basketball games I have ever witnessed yeah. in my life. Yeah. You and I have gone back this year and watched, and watched that entire it. game, yep. not yep. just highlight, the entire game. 
one of the greatest college basketball games ever, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And when I, rivalries like that happen, and especially with the way the tournament bracket lays out where they try not to have you face conference opponents that much, you know the bracket. If Kentucky and Arkansas are both good next year, you know the bracket makers are putting them on opposite sides of that bracket. Oh, yeah. They're going to face in the championship they're going to face. They can play four times next year. Yes. Obviously, Kentucky fans will remember – it best if Kentucky wins it. You don't want to lose yeah. to Coach Cal like that. But if Kentucky, if Arkansas is good with Coach Cal and Kentucky's good with whoever their head coach is and they face the national title, that'll be a generational game. That'll I, be one I, they remember in 50 and, years. And whether or not Kentucky fans, like you said, want him to succeed or not, he's going to succeed. He's going – and Kentucky fans better get ready for it too. He's going to go down there. He's going to be wearing his special suits. He's going to be kissing babies. He's going to have – Whoever you can tenders. think of, they didn't have little Dirk at the games coming out playing song, whatever. Drake's already in the transfer portal. Every, <laughs> he's gonna be rejuvenated. He's gonna have a fire lit from under him, and he's gonna be the cow that Kentucky fell in love with 15 years ago. And Kentucky and, fans, I'm sorry, don't get your feelings that hurt when former Kentucky players. Oh no! Arkansas. Every the last 15 players year, happen. except maybe for like Reed Shepard, they're all cow guys. Yeah. Their loyalty is you, and. Kentucky fans aren't going to like it, and I understand it. They played here. We love them here, but you don't give up on your coach like that. And there's going to be guys who are going to visit Lexington just as much as they visit Fayetteville. People get mad. People got mad at uh, Cousins for his take and all that. Cousins was committed to Memphis. Yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah, those are Coach Cal he followed guys. Kenta- he followed Calipari to Kentucky, not Kentucky with Cal. He and, was but going he, to go to Memphis for but Calipari. The thing is, the Nest head coach that comes in. It's gonna be the same. It's thing. gonna be a double edged sword. Say say thing. Scott Drew comes in and then VJ Edgecombe comes with him. You can't be like, oh, I don't want him. He didn't want to come here. He wanted to go play for. Yeah. That's how it works, yeah. and it has worked for and like former that for Baylor, thirty pa- years. Former now. Baylor pa- players will endorse Kentucky, yeah, because that's how college sports work. Yeah. yeah, they'll still come visit now and then. They'll still do the uh the what is it the TBT tournament this yeah. week. They'll yeah. still do that stuff. But don't get hurt. Don't have your feelings hurt when not, you see not some all guys. Of them. They might. No. Some. A lot of them are going to have split loyalty. They'll still remember Kentucky, but they're going to endorse Arkansas also because yeah. that's their yeah. coach. Yeah. Coach. When you we talked about this just a second ago in terms of changing lives, Calipari took high schoolers, and maybe they would have got there anyway if they didn't come to Kentucky. But yep. as far as they're concerned, Coach Calipari picked them when they were in high school. He treated them like a son for a few years, maybe one year, and got them their dream job in the NBA. And a lot of them made millions and millions and millions and of dollars. And they're still doing so. John Calipari took these kids and changed their lives. Yeah, They will remember him and be indebted to him yeah. for that forever. Yeah. Well, guys, I feel like that's a pretty good spot to wrap it up. <sighs> so much more we can say, but... Yeah, you know, but I mean, with something like this, you know, you have the questions you've had answered and you have the questions that you, question marks that you still have and... Yeah. If anything crazy happens, well, you know. And, not and like I said, we're Sources, not going to know. Fresno State just hired John Welch as their associate head coach. So that's one Kentucky assistant gone. Well, Form- well formerly with the Warriors of the NBA, and, by and, the way. And this was going to happen both with yes. the roster and coaching staff. So none of it's surprising. Just pointing that out. He's not following Calipari to Arkansas, former Golden State Warriors guy, um, going to Fresno State. Weird. Good for him. But, you know, uh, Cole Wall. Uh, We'll be looking out for any coverage. I'll have Based another on, 20 stories in a few days. I know, I know, plenty of them. But uh, I want to thank you guys for coming on. It was awesome. Big topic, special podcast. Special team, special play. Let's go. <laughs> but, uh, you know. This is our know. one shining moment. I know, right? <laughs> I know. We want to thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Colonel at the Buzzer. With an official hiring for the position of head coach at Kentucky basketball still yet to be made, there's still a lot of question marks to be answered. And until then, I want to encourage you to go to kycolonel.com or kycolonel sports on Twitter to check out all of our UK athletics coverage concerning both Kentucky men's basketball and everything else. Until next week, I'm Colton Johnson, and thank you for tuning in. <laughs>